I've had players tell me very strange stories about basketball. Maybe some of you can relate to them. I've had players tell me that when they let the ball go on one of their shots, they wanted it to go in so badly that even though when they shot the ball it was offline, that they mentally bent the ball in the air so it would go in. I'm not joking, I've had people tell me this and I've had that experience myself, have you? Joe Namath, who was a great quarterback in the NFL, one time said, you know, sometimes I let the ball go and it's in the air and I didn't put enough on it, but I'm watching the ball in the air and I want it to go an extra 10 yards and I do it somehow mentally, I push it that far. I've had players tell me that they get the ball stolen and the guys going down, you know, they get their pocket picked and the other guys going down for a layup and they want that player to miss the layup so bad that they do and they get the ball and bring the ball back up court. I've had players tell me that even when they were down 15 points going into the fourth quarter that they knew they were going to win. They didn't just believe it, they actually knew they were going to win. They can't explain it but they knew. I've had underdogs, major underdogs tell me, I don't know but I knew we were going to defeat the undefeated team. I knew we were going to win. Strange things happen when you invest your entire being into winning, into being your best. And it only seems to work for those players who are putting in hours and hours and hours of practice. It seems as if the basketball gods, if you will, open up their treasures and kind of give you gifts. If you've ever seen the Hunger Games, you do certain things and they drop those little treats in. Well, when you sacrifice in basketball, it's sort of like getting one of those little gifts dropped in on you. It's hard to explain, and I know it's sort of metaphysical and a bit new age, but I've talked to too many players, and I've talked to too many athletes who this has happened to. I know golfers who have hit a ball, and it was going to go in the, the water, and they, they saw it hitting the green, and it did hit the green. It's almost like The Matrix, if you've seen The Matrix movie. If not, you should watch it. The main character, Neo, has certain... This is a spoil alert, so turn it off if you haven't seen it. But Neo eventually sees through everything. And when he flexes, he flexes in the movie and the world kind of moves around him. It fluctuates around him. And if you've ever been in the presence of somebody like Kobe or Jordan, you can feel space and time sort of shift and bend around you when they walk into a room. A wealthy family member of mine, I, I'll never forget this, I walked into, I didn't know him that well, but you walked into his office, and when you did, you felt like everything was possible. And it wasn't his office, it was the energy from his mind, his being, his spirit, had proliferated in there, and it permeated everything, and it felt so good, and you felt like you could do it. So somebody who has this sort of belief and willingness, you get sucked into it. You become what they are. You're transformed into who they are, what they are at their core. You start to feel really good about yourself. And this, as a leader, if you're a leader who exudes this, can be transmitted to your team. I was watching a Netflix show, Jessica Jones, about a comic book character and all forthrightness. I didn't know it was that violent. I only saw one episode and I fast forward through violent scenes. I don't think it's good for your mind to do that. It's not that I can't take it. Trust me, I read a lot of things about the horrors in the world on the news. So it's not squeamishness. I just think it's gratuitous when it's in movies. But that's for another podcast. But I, as I was watching this, one character in the show had this superpower where when he stepped into the room, anybody in his presence, I guess he gave off pheromones or something, but anybody in his presence would have to do what he said if you were within you know, a certain perimeter of him. You were intoxicated by whatever it is that was emanating from his pores. And you had to obey his commands. And he was a villain, so he sent people to do awful things. But there is something in people that when you believe in what you're doing, you know, when I was building some of my companies, I believed so much in what I was doing that I drew people towards me who would work for free, who would do what I said, who believed. So we all kind of have this power to find people who will help us. We also have this ability to shape reality, to bend things, to create synchronicities and coincidences that don't happen for, sorry to be blunt, lazy people. Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, was said to have a reality distortion field, meaning 
He would see things that were impossible, but he believed them so much that you would start to see it too. You would start to see, okay, maybe we can put a thousand songs in a phone. Maybe we can change the world. A friend of mine recently told me that luck is a skill. I never thought of it that way, but it is a skill. It's, it's a way you think. It's a way you go into the world. It's what you believe. When you think luck is a skill, you have to ask yourself, what is a skill? It's something you acquire with practice. Well, the way to practice to have luck is to simply walk around and feel lucky. Don't wait for external events to line up. You use a reality distortion field and you see yourself as lucky right now that when you play, you get all the breaks. When you do anything, things work out. You carry this into your life, not just in basketball. Everything and everyone is on your side when you are on your own side. Remember that saying. Everything and everyone is on your side when you are on your own side. When you have your own back, when you believe in yourself, people come to you. So get excited each day. Things are going to work out because you are a lucky person. When people enter your presence, they'll start to know that anything is possible. It's the attitude of great leaders and winners, whether it be Jordan, Steve Jobs, or you. Start putting yourself on par with great people. You have nothing to lose. What's the alternative? To look at yourself as average and mediocre? If you have a choice between being confident or not, why not be confident? If you have a choice between being lucky and unlucky, you might as well be lucky. Go to basketballbrain.com if you want to train your brain. There's a free shooting workout available on the site. As always, we are dedicated to your greatness.